Hurry, hurry, step right up and witness the most splendiferous stable of studs and cacophony of conies this side of the Mississippi. It's OSW land, the happiest place on earth. We'll see you in court, Disney. <laughs> this is your host, the ringmaster, Jay Hunter, joined as ever with a strong man, V1. What's the story? And the bearded lady, also. Do you do? Ah, you didn't sound like doing that. That's it, that, that, pretty sure. <laughs> Get out your Virgil Dollars, Test Tokens, and Jarrett Bars. It's TNA Hard Justice 2007, and it's coming up right now. Oh, is he? Uh, how's tricks? What's the crack? Did you see the match? What match? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we won. <laughs> What's up? Awesome OSW land intro there. Massive thanks to Harley Wooden for the carny music, Danny Williams for the artwork, and Gordon Price for the animation. Slonja for your amazing feedback for TNA Lockdown. A return to form, right? my favourite show for a while. Yeah, it was really good. Coming down the pipe <laughs> on Nugger You is our Aliens 1986 review. Massive thanks to at Darth Sitteray for helping V1 with your new desk. Yeah, thank you, bros. <clears throat> Come wait. The Walnut Warriors. Dude. The Walnut Warrior. <laughs> and at Zach Dunstan at Scan for some new PC gear. And oh my god! David Baxter for the V1 Irish coffee tattoo. Holy fucking Whoa. shit. Blown away. I, like, I didn't know what to say mm. other than you're a bit mental and a bit awesome, mate. It even has your name on it. It fucking does. There is no doubt that yeah. that is a V1 tattoo. Yeah. Exactly. And to think that I asked for that to be cut and cunty face over here didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and does he get a review, Steve? Maybe you can review some. Yeah, don't look at me. You you got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> a review is boys table. <laughs> Excellent, Steve, because guess what? I've got a boys table <laughs> right here. Nice. Uh, Scotty too honey. Yes. He's a boy. X Pac. Yeah. No. Well, like he's a boy. Of course he's a boy. But you don't like him. No, no, I hate him, but no, yeah. he's a good he's boy. Definitely. He's a good <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Hurricane. Ah, you like a bit of Hurricane, Jay. Uh, I like yeah. the Hurricane, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his last one, La Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you to deny it, huh? My children need wine. <laughs> wow, Whopper boy stuff. That's not bad. Everyone there is definitely a boy. You it's know? a big... Uh, Neo boy stable. It's from his <laughs> era in, in wrestling. All right, go easy on him. <laughs> anyway, thank you, mate. That is so awesome. Yeah, Jesus. Holy shit, you are going to go down in history. We should be... <laughs> <laughs> OSW history. OSW history. <laughs> history. <laughs> David Baxter, a winner is you. Six sides of steel. Razor sharp barbed wire. Justice will be served cold, hard, and bloody. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Hard Justice. Justice will be served cold, hard, and bloody. Ew. It's TNA Hard Justice, August 12th, 2007, from the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida, in front of 900 comps with approximately 25,000 TVs tuned in at home. 
commentators tonight are your boys DW Don West and Iron Mike Tenay as they run down the featured bouts Ultimate Humiliation, X Division Spotfest, Doomsday Chamber O Blood, Winner Takes All, and yes, Pac Man Jones in TNA! In that order of importance. <laughs> Cut backstage. It's Batman Jones. He arrives in the Hummer. The WCW Hummer. Chorus of booze as soon as he comes out. It's amazing. Have either of you seen Last Chance You? Like Pac-Man is like, yeah, you need to watch this. It it's not movie. Netflix. No, it's like a documentary series about this American football team in a really poor area in you know, Southern America. He sounds like the lads on Last Chance You. You know, he's kind of like, I know going to do no worse than this. <laughs> contest is an X Division three-way tag match. Black Machismo, Jay Lethal and the Guru Sanjay Dutt versus the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban versus Christopher Daniels and Senshi, two-thirds of Triple X. Uh, what was the gimmick of Triple X? Just three lads coming together? <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that, yeah. Elix Skipper comes to the ring with Daniels and Senshi. Skipper returned for Victory Road's Ultimate X match last month. Man, he looks rough. <laughs> Can't need more of them cage walks. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's a tag match, it's actually for an X Division title shot. The title changed hands monthly from Saban to Machismo, and now it's on Samoa Joe. Guru and Machismo start off with some guns double team with a double elbow to the midsection, jaw jacker, and follow up with a rolling clothesline. Shelley has none of that with a spit take to take control. Amazing wraparound hurricane run by Dot, and yes, we're back in the impact zone as Black Guy with the Rally Towels goes nuts. Oh man, front and center. He's so great. I love this guy. Lethal gets worked over by the guns and triple X. Thrown into a pendulum boot, double arm twist and back elbow, double suplex and successful quick leg drops. And then the guns go, yeah! That was so great. They're like marking out how awesome they are, which made the fans mark out, which made me mark out. Vicious circle. (laughs) Dutt's in for the save with his gorgeous springboard moonsault to the guns. But what about triple X? Theatrical Daniel goes, hey, what do you want to do? And Dutt just grabs his hand and it's like, all right, let's do the taker spot. He looks like a fucking Muppet waiting for him to do his Hindi walk on the top rope or something. Hindi taker? Yeah. Mm. Everyone bailed to the outside. Suicide dive to Shelley and Dutt. Split-legged moonsault to Lethal. Sabin and Senshi with dual splashes to the outside, taking out Daniels and Lethal, setting up Dutt for his gorgeous moonsault to the outside and everyone marks out. Yeah, it's amazing. He Dutt is a wrestler that really doesn't do anything boring. Everything is crazy shit and executed perfectly and fast-paced. It's great. And, like, even if he's doing something that's not crazy, he does it so well that you mark out anyway, because he makes it look fucking easy. He's phenomenal. Check out Dutt's back knee. Yeah. Uh, Nash heard us in the last review. <laughs> He'd have these backstage segments on Impact where he tells Sanjay, you're on the juice. <laughs> <laughs> you're a gas No, 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 no. You're a no, gas head. No, 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 no. What's this look what? like? What? What's this look like? Testosterone? No, what's no, this no, look no, like, no, huh? No, no, no. The juice? It's an ambush. Throwing kayfabe to the wind, Daniels is first to his feet and hooshes Dutt into the barricade. After eating a big boot in the corner, Fallen Angel is caught up in the ropes, so referee Earl Hebner turns his back, attending to him. Prime time for Elix to attack Saban, setting him up, straddling the ropes, and does a tightrope walk into Hurricane Rana. You know the skipper cage walk into Hurricane Rana? Is that not still one of the best spots in the history of wrestling? 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking phenomenal. It's no um, 450 backwards a somersault by Jack Evans, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on, onto a, like a bed of cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone with top rope knockdowns garnished by Dutt's top rope dick in a face. What? Holy shit, a video game sequence to take us home. Guru hits a corner 619 and pendulum kick. Daniels gets ghetto blasted. Around the world Hurricane Rana and standing moonsault for a two. They've only started this sequence and the crowd are chanting, this is awesome. Oh, this is what the X Division was built on. Great revolution, caught him with the DDT. Double team move now by Saban and Shelley on Black Machismo. Look out for the sandwich. Oh, but too late as you saw kind of a double foot stop by Sid G. X gone guillotine. Warriors way from the mat to Saban. Palm slamming a basketball to Shelley. Daniels gets Dutt in a torture rack standing at the corner, setting up Senshi to do a pebble skip Warrior's way onto Dutt and then down onto Shelley. Senshi goes up, oh he does! He gets the ball! He gets the ball! What a combination! Pin! One! Two! No, oh, no, no, no! They no. Broke Jay Lethal! Jay Lethal broke it up! Wow! Listen to this crowd! Explode. Oh my god, it was fucking amazing. What a spot. Jumping around, they're so happy, and the rally tells. <laughs> <laughs> Machismo takes a heart attack kick to the face, but reverses the STO and pushes Daniels into Senshi, gets the small package, and 1 2 3 to win the triple threat tag match in 1550. So Machismo is next in line for the X Division Championship. Yeah, great X Division spot fest. Dutt rope walk, the skipper rope walk, and then the Senshi spot were amazing. Other than that, yeah, really good solid X Division stuff, but I wouldn't say it stands out versus other X Division multi man matches. Whopper. Pretty much every month's match is very similar. You know, they're just all awesome multi man matches, but I definitely liked this more than last month because I thought that the booking was better. It was given plenty of time everyone was given a chance to shine especially Dutt Dutt was unbelievable yeah I love this match I was surprised at how awesome Dutt and Lethal and Triple X's tandem offense was love the choreographed video game flurry only negative they don't finish the match on the biggest spot they keep going for an extra 30 seconds so everyone's kind of you know yeah be like RVD leave on a high hey lose your belts (laughs) Yeah, Tyrone Biggins here, Elix Skipper. <laughs> He'll be back at Bound for Glory. Uh, so, you know, you can get your fix of him. You can't mention getting your fix around him. <laughs> <laughs> Am I too late for the five o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, JB butts in Joe's room, but doesn't find Joe. It's Karen Angle and some just incredible looking bloke. Mm. I actually have a question about this guy. Is this trademark? Fuck you, Steve. It is. Oh, I I fucking ruined it, did I? (laughs) No, no, yeah, well, yeah, I actually, when watching the main event, I was like, I know you from so... Fucking hell, you're John Cena's first cousin. John Cena's mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, helped produce his album, and he sure he did Kurt Angle's he did theme Kurt song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, Steve. Very good. Uh, yeah, because I, I knew, I knew. I was like, I know this smug fucking face somewhere. Like, <laughs> he does have a very smug face, doesn't he? Very punchable face. He does, but I was thinking, yeah, why? In kayfabe, he was banging Karen Angle. That would make me very smug. And I was, I was like, calling your bluff right now. There's no way she's downgrading that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. He is a bit runty. He, you know. he is quite uh, Olive Garden-y yeah. credibly, you know. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll, I'll catch you guys later. No, no, no. JD, come on in. Come on in. Hey. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I, I want you to meet the new man in my life. This backstage with Karen Angle, uh, no boom mics, no levelation, can't hear shit. It's horrific. But I gather she's looking forward to being Kurt's ex-wife. Mm-hmm. JB kind of comes out and he's, uh, you know, and he says, oh my God, wait until Kurt hears about this. And that immediately goes to rat. <laughs> it's just a tell, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate.
Match number two. It's Raven versus Kaz. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's lost the S&M clockwork orange look and back into his classic grungy WCW garb. Yeah, I'm I'm all over it. Like a cheap suit. Like it's like a old school wrestling garb. It's very dated, but I'm you know, I just think it's an awesome look. Yeah. Accompanied by serotonin or as a sign says Sarah Jabronin. <laughs> May I just say I hate serotonin. I think they're one of the worst stables I've ever seen in wrestling. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> jobbers. They are fucking Aren't jobbers. They? Matt Bentley. <laughs> Who the fuck is he? Like? <laughs> Last month you just hated his face. <laughs> I actually watched the four weeks of TV leading up to this show. Do you want to hear the four week build to this match? I absolutely do. Week one. Kaz attacks Serotonin after a match with a Keno stick. Week two, nothing. Week three, nothing. Week four, six man tag featuring Kaz, who gets pinned. Pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> a strong build, you say? Oh, it's yeah. It's like the X7 of uh, builds. Like. <laughs> Bumbling fool booking as Kaz Swerve accepts Raven's offer, Martyr hitting other lad, Raven baseball slides Martyr by accident, Havoc splashing his teammates. A slovenly nothing brawl, crowd chant, this is awesome when it clearly isn't. Stop that. Yeah. Raven's stooges are in. Martyr super kicks Havoc by mistake. Shovey Wovey leaves Raven and Martyr open for a double clothesline over the top, setting Kaz up for a gorgeous jump across Hurricane Rana to the outside. Incredible. It was amazing. Kaz has made it up to the apron. Keep your eyes on Havoc. Oh, wow! 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 Jeff Hardy jumping into the chicken coop has been shown. <laughs> it's been shown hundreds of times. But TNA production, you didn't see it the first time? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> well scouted Martyr gets knocked off the apron. Single leg drop kick to Raven and one, two, three. Oh my God, that was the finish. What's with the finish? It's a kick in the face. A single leg drop kick. What the fuck? Uh, so Kaz demolished all three members of Serotonin in 541. What do you think? Culmination of a month long Culmination. Uh, build here, Steve. Yeah. All, all like four minutes of build were paid <laughs> off in five minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, not great. I mean, Raven's way, way past it at this stage. So he wasn't doing much. Kaz, I quite like Kaz. He needs a gimmick. He only kind of got a gimmick when he, he does up have a gimmick. Him. He likes Metallica. Is that his As gimmick? As you can see by his shorts and, and, and by his the, font, yeah. the like symbol. Isn't that the like cover of like Reload? That Ninja Star thing? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like the the font. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's Cause, cause also just, the font. That's just the Metallica font. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Black Trunks, maybe Metallica Black, Metallica Metallica, if you will. I don't even think he's that cool. It's like no, I only like from Load onwards, <laughs> <laughs> just like me. <laughs> I love load and reload. Gotta pay the trolls no. all. <laughs> Kurt's locker room with red lockers adorned with a flag. I thought it looks awesome. JB tells him what he saw. Kurt asks, did she ask about me? <laughs> Hilarious. He then asks what he assumes to be her criteria for cheating on him. Is he younger? Does he have gold medals? Does he have <laughs> gold medals? And storms off to see for himself. I thought, um, just Kurt Angle. He's a fantastic comic actor, as well as an incredible in-ring performer. The uh, total package. Yeah, if you will. This is the angle that I love. The original WWF angle. Comic heel goes into the ring and kicks your ass. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know you use lads loved him in all guises. This is the first pay-per-view I've ever watched for TNA. Really? Mm. Pac-Man mm. Jones is what you're yeah, going to Yeah, I know. So TNA. lucky. So fortunate. <laughs> so, yeah, when I saw angle back to his original WWF angle, I was like, I was hooked. What now? Hey, were you looking at my ass? No, I wasn't looking at your ass. You were looking at my ass. I caught you. Hornets at me. I wasn't looking at your ass. (laughs) 
Match number three, it's a barroom brawl, James Storm versus Rhino. After finishing his feud with Wildcat Chris Harris, peeking at the excellent Texas Death Match at Sacrifice, James Storm started teaming with Bobby Roode, foreshadowing beer money, to defeat EY and Rhino. He celebrated by pouring beer into Rhino's mouth, which set off the kayfabe former alcoholic. Rhino was furious, and this sparked the feud. So TNA, sensitive people, book a bar room brawl. <laughs> it's an anything goes, one fall to a finish, i.e. no DQ or count out. I was wondering what a bar room brawl entails, like on 2003 Smackdown, the APA had their bar room invitational mm. with a saloon mock-up near the ramp. I was actually thinking about that exact same match. If this happened in the WWE, they'd build a fucking bar. And here is like, here's a table in the ring. <laughs> Spare no expense, Dixie. Yeah? <laughs> and here's a bar at the end of the ramp. And uh, so kind. And a drunk looking mannequin as well. That was just that was awesome. It all off. You oh, like yeah. the, you like yeah, the mannequin? Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Storms Bar and Grill. <laughs> Big smile on James as well. Always nice to see. Rhino stampedes to the ring. Eh? Also, yes, frugal Rhino. Did you see his singlet? It's uh, his WWE singlet, or H-Y-N-O. Okay. And he's cut off the head of the Y to make an I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's too much of a gap then between the I yeah. and the N. Yes. You could have gone and gotten something you ironed onto it. Like, you know, go down to a t-shirt printer. You know, one of these places yeah, at the ILAC yeah. Center, you know? <laughs> Rhino fucks a chair and I th- out on you know into the crowd and I think he completely missed the ramp where Storm is and into the crowd. Couldn't hit a cow's arse with a banjo. <laughs> <laughs> OC's favourite straight over the guardrail and brawl into the crowd. Uh, uh, where's fucking Team 3D? This be right up there, Alan. Yeah. Left to right, up the stairs, out loud with a camera, having a great time. <laughs> Off to the left, as we see a sign, Rhino, please gore storm. Pretty decent likelihood of Rhino using his finisher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the sign's facing us, not Rhino. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Real fake wall. Rhino crashes through a facade and back to Storm's bar and grill. The former alcoholic Rhino downs a beer and the crowd cheer. Sad face. The commentators have to act like they're horrified at this. He's like, oh, he's off the wagon. Oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. TNA, TNA, <laughs> TNA. <laughs> he, he was drinking it like he wanted a pop. He kind of raised it in the air and then yeah, drank it. Yeah. So don't do that. Parse on Miss Jackie. Parse. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> And Rhino trashes the set. We see a random toilet next to the commentators. Hilarious. What bar have you... (laughs) 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 What pub have you been in where there's a fucking toilet beside the bar? Maybe in Ballier. I don't know, Steve. (laughs) Storm evades a swirly and slipping on the wet ramp to deliver a suplex. Big back body drop breaks the bar and grill, and we see just how shitty it was constructed. It was mostly a security railing (laughs) that they gussied up. It's awful. Rhino guzzles down vodka, which isn't cool. No. Tear your throat. I did that once, uh, ended up in James's. And we get the swirly spot. War Machine then takes a break sitting on the can. That's not cool. No one wants to see that visual. No, oh, no, weird. It's strange. Like I'm, I'm the whole match. I'm confused as to what I'm supposed to be emoting. There's a guy who's fallen off the wagon, but he's the face. Are we supposed to cheer him beating James Storm or not? Or does TNA just want us to be sad for the match? <laughs> <laughs> Push a ladder into Cowboy and into the ring. Rhino gets Jackie up for a press slam. I was like, oh shit! Are you sending her through the horizontal ladder? But no, Storm interrupts and Rhino takes that bump. Ouch. Oh. Apparently possessed by the liquor, Rhino sets up a table in the corner of the ring, but gores himself through it. Oh, it's just, it all goes south. <laughs> Smashy washy with a trash can. Chair shot. Fuck. One man concerto. Last call super kick. 
Storm doesn't go for cover to Rudy's befuddlement, but retrieves a beer bottle, smashes it over the back of Rhino's head. One, two, three, and then 13, 15, oh shit, Rhino loses the big match, as always. TNA, TNA. <laughs> for all the, the strangeness of this match, I thought it was actually a decent brawl. I quite enjoyed it, even though I don't know if I was supposed to. <laughs> but did Rhino lose because he was drunk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he was using it to fuel himself, and then he, he's an abusive guy, so he... Went over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who gets drunk that quickly, though? I, Maybe his liver shot. Hmm. Yeah. And Steve, I'd say you didn't just... You went into town. I like... So I drank... It was a daddy nagin, which is what? Like a half bottle? I think it's seven like fifty mils. Oh, okay. And then I waited about 15 minutes. I was like, this is shit. Nothing. <laughs> And so then I went into the spar and I got a bottle of wine and I downed that. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. And then I waited a few more minutes, walked from Central Bank up to the hideout, which is like a 10, 15 minute walk. I was there for a while yeah. before I hit the wall. Like yeah. You're talking about, a, you know, like an hour. Like There you go, you see? Yeah, and I was 15. Yeah, exactly. Not a 280 pound pro fucking wrestler. Yeah. Like. yeah, yeah. So I don't buy it, Jay, is what I'm trying to say. Steve is harder than Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> also have longer arms. <laughs> God, he got so upset when we chanted Tyrannosaurus <laughs> arms. Tyrannosaurus arms. <laughs> Poor guy. That's really mean. Yeah. He was yeah. born that way. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal is backstage, interrupted by, yeah, baby, or truth. Or uh, Ron the Truth Killings in TNA. He barks about Pac-Man and asks if she knows that he's a two-time world heavyweight champion in TNA. That's fucked. That's crazy. Big bang a made card off this lad. That just speaks to how little the NWA TNA belt meant back in 2002. Mm. C-O-N. Spiracy? Match number four is the Voodoo Kin Mafia versus the Latin American Exchange. Pring, pring, BG James and ah, it's cute Kip. <laughs> oh my fuck. And the Voodoo Queen, Roxy Laveau. <laughs> Question, is she only with them because Voodoo? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they told her you're the Voodoo Queen and say no more about it. Because a voodoo kin mafia have nothing to do with no. voodoo, you know? <sighs> That's okay, Roxy. I'll fill you in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I bring to you... New Generation! The roadie Jesse James finished his feud with country singer T and was floundering. Rockabilly was mayor of Boytown. At James's behest... Billy guitar-shotted manager Honky Tonk never drew a dime, and the two got their Attitude Era gimmicks, the Road Dog and Badass Billy Gunn. Christened Outlaws by JR when they won the tag titles from LOD and hightailed it into a waiting car, the two helped out the initial incarnation of D-Generation X with their dastardly deeds. When Sean left, they were recruited in DX 2.0 as part of the top babyface stable. They'd a fantastic run in 98, but by 99, both drifted into the singles, hardcore and IC division. They split in May and even had a shit feud over the rights to DX, as Tra was main eventing by then. After some awkward shuffling with three live crew, they reformed in TNA as BG James and Kip James. So they're married. <laughs> uh, yeah, they never explained why he took PG's last name. <laughs> it's so bizarre, isn't it? How bizarre. <laughs> uh, yes, BG James and Kip James, aka the New Age Outlaw singular. And when WWF had none of that, he was just the outlaw. And then he settled on, uh, settled down with PG <laughs> and became Kip James. TNA, Spike TV, the 
this is exact. Oh, they cut his mic off. Vince Russo comes in late 2006. The happy couple get a gimmick change, that of shooting on TNA and then WWF, specifically Sean and Triple H, as DX had just reformed for their shameless merch run. Renamed the Voodoo Kin Mafia, so they could have the initials of VKM, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, isn't that hilarious? They filmed vignettes trying to get the attention of WWE. VKM would show up around Stanford and call out Sean and H. They even posted accepting an open challenge the Hardys posted for December to dismember. Desperate. That's like us saying, yeah, I'll accept your open challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It is, yeah. Themselves, Russo and JB bought tickets and went to a WWE house show. Wow. All a similar vein to when TNA, back in 2004, sent Douglas... Abyss, Miss Brooks, and Road Dog, and others. They brought milk, cookies, and balloons to a soundstage WWE were using. WWE were filming a vignette for the 2005 Royal Rumble, and they thought they'd come on then. <laughs> Road Dog asking for Mahi Mahi and Vince McMahon as he made him a bunch of money back in the day. WWE were furious and fired TNA director David Zahadi's dad from the WWE as a result. Oh, wow. That's a fucking court case. Hmm. Hey, don't come in our backyard and cook your mahi-mahi. If you do, we will take your food. (laughs) Anyway, best of all, VKM broke out the rubber nose. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And did a DX parody, issuing a million-dollar challenge, sucker. Armageddon 2006. Dixie actually thought Vince would respond and accept and froze a million dollars. Fuck in hell. They lowered their demands to meeting Michael Hickenbottom, Shawn Michaels, <laughs> at the Alamo. <laughs> I'm a white noise. The Alamo, the Alamo, the Alamo at high noon. Hickenbottom. Of course, nothing happened and they kind of just stopped declaring victory on the war that only ever had one side. TNA, you beautiful, beautiful company. What about Christy Hemi? She took umbrage that they always banged on about Sean and Tra, but never its third member, China, and that women in general deserve respect. They deserve to be more than just a blip in the history of this business. Let me tell you something, you little slut. Hmm. The valiant, chauvinist baby faces had none of that, smashed all of her teams until Christy Hemi's real life boyfriend, Tramp Stamp Hoyt, turned on VKM. This left the spot open for an accomplice, the voodoo queen, Roxy Levux. <laughs> what a fit. Because we got your attention, didn't we, Paul Levesque? Would you like to hear the build? Oh, yeah. What? Week one. Nothing. <laughs> Week two. In a great scene with Team 3D and the Steiners, LAX and VKM run out of the end for a smalls. Week three, nothing. And week four, there's a tag match featuring Kip James and Homicide. Not the six-man tag. Uh, not the dip Just tag. a regular tag. That's more than the other they, matches have got. They were it? out twice. Hmm? This is what happens when you have 42 minutes a week. Road Dog and Homicide start off, but we need to get Cute Kip and his Velvet Sky attire in. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, it has to be a rib, because whenever you hear him talk, he's very straight-laced, no-nonsense guy. LAX sans Conan, wagging fingers at Hector Guerrero as they beat him up. However, they have a new theme song signalling their babyface turn, so try not to think about it. Yeah. Where was Conan? Where was the Alamo? He's at the Alamo. (laughs) He's waiting on Sean. Very good. Conan needed hip surgery. TNA paid for it. They wanted the money back. And he said, I got it. Wrestling for you and racial discrimination and bullying and other shit. He took him to court and they settled out of court. And he won at least a half million from TNA. Awesome. Delighted for him. Kip would have delayed Jackhammer to homicide. Physically difficult, but so much less impressive than Goldberg when he does it. Yeah. First negative chant of the night, same old shit as a reaction to BG's suck it to the crowd. ...for him to get the tag into the fresh man. At one hour and two seconds, BG hits the worst kick I've ever seen. <laughs> the 
fucking state of it. <laughs> Wait, what? Hot tag to Hernandez signals the finish to the match. Clean house, Cracker Jack, teamwork, wheelbarrow, clothesline, and backsplash. BG up for the border toss, but Voodoo Queen throws some freedom powder into his eyes, leaving him prone for a shit rocker dropper, and VKM pick up the win. Wow, they must know that VKM can't go. If, like, all of their matches are a couple of minutes long. Very short. They don't have any real spots. Mm. They're not over and famous. The fans hate them. They're chanting the same old shit and DX reject. I reckon Russo thinks that they are cutting edge gimmick and promos, you know? In 1997. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hector Guerrero actually runs into the ring and explains to the ref what happened. And not Tito kicking the ropes either. He actually does something helpful. He points out the freedom powder. The ref agrees and restarts the match. Homicide seizing the opportunity and roll up for the three in 550. So LAX win. The lads appreciate Guerrero's help, but you'll have to wait until impact for him to join LAX and officially replace Conan. Of course you do. Uh, <laughs> this is bollocks. If Roxy threw freedom powder, they cheated. You don't restart the match. No. Nope. It's a DQ. I completely agree. And how does Hector have this authority to tell the referee that something changed? He's not like the linesman. You know, he's a he's a commentator. He's a Spanish language yeah, commentator. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Kip got taken off TV for giving out about the money wasted on Pac-Man Jones. Really? Yeah. He was the only one that complained. Oh, everyone's complaining, but this I'm, guy about Pac-Man, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure he's just turned himself face. Yeah, wow. Pac-Man Jones. He's back, he's back, he's a Pac-Man Jones. Pac-Man Jones. Dixie should have did that. And he's like, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Match number five is an ultimate humiliation match between Showtime Eric Young and Bobby Roo. Since we last saw them, both men have been embarrassing each other. EY pantsing Roberts. Wow, Bobby Root really is the next Triple H. He loves that spot, getting his arse out. Yeah. Why do people, every time that they get their jocks pulled down, they flail around like idiots? As opposed to just pulling their jocks yes. up immediately? That, done. Yeah. Fair enough that they were pulled down to his ankles. You know. <laughs> like, Tackle <laughs> out. Like, <laughs> meatspin.com. Like... <laughs> <laughs> then I can understand you're off balance and you're all over the shop but like they're just like pulled down to your thigh <laughs> done get on with your life <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy the Canadian version of a tar and feather a maple syrup and feather yeah nice and safe all roads lead to a Russo booked match where surely both men will be embarrassed Backstage, EY tells JB that this is just like high school as there's lockers, but no classes or teachers. That was quite funny. But Borash rallies him into positive thinking. EY sees Kurt and literally won't face him. I thought, wow, that puts Kurt over really strong. Like this guy's literally cowering away from him. Hmm. He's always doing this kind of comedy shtick with JB when he was uh, being courted by Miss Brooks to sign a contract with Robert Root. Him and JB went into it 7-Eleven and buy condoms, you know? <laughs> nice. And, he, and he's looking for, oh, these are small. Do you have anything smaller? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Price check on condom, please. Angle says he couldn't find Joe, Karen or the new boy toy and tells JB he's no Dr. Nash. Oh my God, Dr. Nash. I love this character. Kevin Nash. He is Kurt's own personal shrink. He chats to Kurt while sitting in his Speedos. The two of them are getting their tan on. He hits on Karen after Kurt gives her shit and walks out. And then when she turns him down, he's like, Kurt's right, you have a fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's fucking great. I absolutely love this guy. Whopper character. Kevin Nash is just having the crack in TNA. I've no doubt he didn't add one single buy to any show <laughs> in his entire tenure in this company. But by God, I love this time there. Can I have a 
have uh, won the Best Acting Award before for the Guggenhag over there for my German snuff films. Ah, I never, never saw those. Robert Roode and Miss Brooks enter. They're frosty towards each other as Bobby has been taking his frustrations out on Miss Brooks, who'll surely not stand for that too much longer. EY does his flinch for your own pyro gimmick, which is winner. I love it. Showtime sends Rude to the outside as Crazy Tits, aka Miss Brooks, or as Tanae calls her, the Flotation Floozy. Being distracted by the Flotation Floozy. They're, uh, they're, they're ridiculous. They're, they're balloon tits. Like, mm-hmm. what's happening? You know? I'm fine with it. That's her gimmick. Like, the camera looks at her tits all the time. That's it, you know? Okay. It's like, um, you know, Dennis in Always Sunny when he's at the psychiatrist and he's like doing his own notes and he turns around and shows her and it's just a bird with massive tits and he's like, yes, I've been quite generous. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that's Miss Brooks. They are insane. The flotation floozy berates him and hits him with her shoe. Uh-huh. DQ. DQ, please. <laughs> Big back body drop by Rude as Brooke celebrates by go-go dancing. She's just like... (laughs) Why not? DW sees it and mentions his own elevation. (laughs) (laughs) That was very clever. Nice somersault dropkick by EY to escape, but Rude kills momentum with an Alabama slam. Fucking nasty one too, holy shit. Follows up by unsheathing his knee and delivering a breath rope knee drop. Both men are extremely competent, smooth wrestlers, having a back-and-forth straight wrestling match. Scratch that, Miss Brooks is in and is catapulted face-first into Rude's crotch, showing off her G-string. EY gets Tracy up on his shoulders for a Death Valley driver, and then Rude too, but they escape the spot, sadly. Tracy fails to give Rude the brass knucks, but second time is textbook, distract the ref, KO punch, Glorious gets the 1-2-3 in 9-31. Ah, poor EY's going to get tarred and feathered. Again. Quicker than an electric camel? (laughs) Gail comes out to EY's aid, but Brooks attacks her from behind. Rude goes to punch Gail, but socks crazy tits instead, knocking her out. Very uncool spot. EY kicks Bishop Brennan up the arse and scoots away. (laughs) Rude looks on from the ramp as the faces tar and feather Miss Brooks who wakes up and comedy sells it, so all's right with the world. Thus rendering your match dip, bollocks. I really like Rude. Always have. I can't really think of any really exciting matches he's ever been in. He's just a really solid, technically proficient wrestler, but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever getting really excited. Yeah, actually, yeah. Hmm. You weren't showing up, Steve? No, no, the old... uh, Banana wasn't peeled, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> and that harkens the halfway point of the show. It's time for the outbreak questionarium. <laughs> No, of course I haven't seen it. You know, I hate watching other wrestling shows. I, I have no idea. I think it's some sort of show about chocolate. Oh, fuck. Hello. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and welcome to the Ad Break Questionarium. I'm doing it this time because OSW Review have paid me literally thousands of dollars of your Naga University money. That, that's mine now. And this time I'm asking you how TNA should have booked Black Rain. Answers after the break. Thinking explosion. Kevin, did you get choke slammed? Pile drived? No. Come on, big sexy. What's wrong? I've got Monster Truck Madness! Monster Truck Madness for Nintendo 64! The biggest, fattest monster truck game in the world! 19 trucks to choose from, including Big Boy and the WCW NWO Ripple Trucks! Multiplayer Mania allows one to four players to compete in seven modes of play, including Battle Game! Monster Truck Madness! Reach out and crush someone! Did you get it? Before the break, I asked you how TNA should have booked Black Rain. If you said, just do Goldust but call him Oscar, eh, or do a musical thing but call him Platinum, you're wrong. The correct answer is, of course, you don't. You mustn't. God is already dead. You must not parade on his corpse. 
corpse. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at Plub no at Adam the Blompier, and I'll see you next time. And thanks for playing. We are back with match number six. It's Wild Hat Wild <laughs> <laughs> Wildcat Chris Harris versus Dustin Rhodes, aka. <laughs> <laughs> Black rain! Strap yourself in. The son of a son of a plumber. Dustin Runnels started his wrestling career in 1988 in Championship Wrestling from Florida before getting snapped up by WCW. He bounced around federations, even in the WWF for a few OSW episodes, until having a proper run in WCW. The natural Dustin Rhodes getting the tag titles, relieving Ricky Steamboat for his first US title run. He then beat Ravishing Rick Rude to gain the title a second time before it all went sour. After teaming with the Shockmaster oh, yeah. <laughs> at the 1993 War Games, feuded with Blacktop Bully ah. at the King of the Road. <laughs> Big Black Bully Cock. Both being carnies, they both bladed despite being told absolutely do not blade. <laughs> and were fired. Six months later, he re-debuted in the WWF as the bizarre one Goldust, a flamboyant, mysterious man from Hollywood, obsessed with all things gold, like the Oscar statue, who used his sexuality as man games. <laughs> Peaked with his WrestleMania 12 OJ chase with Roddy Piper and troughed with Jerry Lawler calling him a fag on TV. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Have you got a splicey on that? Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, it's historical footage. Yeah. yeah, you didn't say it. Then you put on a woman's wig and you went around the ring kissing men like a flaming fag. But well, let me tell you something. It'd go way down as Attitude Era Russo got a hold of him, turning him into the artist formerly known as Goldust. Taff Keg, mimicking others like Vader Dust, Marilyn Manson Dust versus the Headbangers, Sable Dust, and went off the wall with random SM gimp gear. What's that all about? It, it was the nannies, bruh. Jeez! I told you he's coming. Feuding with porn star Val Venus, he rejiggered himself into a self-righteous born-again Christian, sponsored by evangelists against television, movies and entertainment, eat me, <laughs> saying he, Christ, would return, but actually meant gold dust. He went back to WCW in 99, even filming vignettes of himself as this white-faced monster slash child molester, <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Children, <laughs> don't, don't stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a Creed song for every <laughs> day. <laughs> he is floating to the ring. All of you don't know I was gold dust, and gold dust sucked. The American Nightmare, inspired by these strangers from Dark City, had his debut entrance and immediately dropped a gimmick to be boring old Texan Dustin Rhodes. Boo. Dustin sucks. Welcomed back as Goldust for the 2002 Royal Rumble, WWE demoted him to the hardcore division before suddenly developed Tourette's-like syndrome after being shocked by evolution. Goldberg. Goldust. <laughs> he had fun with Booker T with At The Movies skits before he and the... Uh, I know what Booker T did last summer. <laughs> Angle was just completely dropped. Then drugs happened. Drugs did indeed happen. He dipped into his dad's indie promotion, Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, and other indie dates before Lone Star Dustin Rhodes popped up in TNA in 2004, regretted it immediately, did nine months in WWE, got the boot, poked his head in Japan before triumphantly returning to TNA for his greatest incarnation. Last month at Victory Road, Dustin Runnels returns and attacks Wildcat because he was taking his spot, and tough shit were feuding. Since he was four, he had a dual personality, and it's coming out at hard justice. Mo me meow. Meow 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 meow. 
years ever since I was four years old, man. This other side that nobody's seen, man, that nobody wants to see, nobody has ever seen. It's wants to come out. He does like a sit down chat with Tanay, just talking as Dustin. I'm a little bit mental, I'm a bit twisted. There are other people in here and they're always battling to like get out. There is the gold guy and there is the diddler. (laughs) (laughs) But there's one other guy, he's the most dangerous one of all. I've tried to like hide him for all these years and uh, he just starts fucking cursing. He's like, he wants to fucking get out. He was like, wants to fuck things up. It's a whopper fucking interview. And I don't know if it's actually whopper or if I'm just a huge mark for Black Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loved it. It's funny, though, that this Seven gimmick was like this work shoot he did where he came out and said, I'm not doing this shit anymore. And now Dustin is basically saying that that was actually real. That was one of his personalities. That's a part of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty cool. It is. It is yeah. cool. Yeah. Backstage, poor Wildcat hasn't had time to get his jacket fixed. It's all frayed and looks like shit. Aww. He says he won't let Dustin, Goldust, or Black Rain take his spot that he's earned. The fucking state of Harris's promo. He's bland, he's nervous. I can't wrap my head around who people fucking fingered this guy to be the... the <laughs> Uh, how people pick this guy to be the breakout superstar from TNA? It's because he used to be ripped. Always more ripped than James Storm. Like. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, he ain't got nothing. Fucking dud. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously TNA agreed because they stuck him in with Black Rain. <laughs> A total enemy that Black Rain has been to the Wildcat. Well, I mean... You- <laughs> The debut, Darkness Falls on OSW. (laughs) Black Rain has arrived. Meow, meow, meow. It marked out so hard, but like I had to tweet out. (laughs) It's fucking great. I've been waiting for this a long, long time. Worth the wait. Yeah. First appearance of Black Rain in TNA. Love the wig. Love the bin bag. bag. I have here the bin bag is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> like <sighs> so so you were saying there a while ago that he was seven. I, I, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, he put his uh, jocks up on Facebook. Hey, who wants to buy my jocks? And I was like, I don't want the jocks, I want the jacket. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. absolutely buy that jacket. <laughs> <sighs> how, much, how much would you be willing to go? Listen, it, I, I'm. It, this is the fans' money I'm going to spend. <laughs> <laughs> at least a couple of hundred. Yeah. And you would wear it, like, not in public, but like... At a, oh, I'd go out with it, yeah. Would yeah. you? Yeah, get a black wig, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, Pearl Harbor is Harris. I, I was thinking I could do a thing and you'll go, meow. <laughs> Back of the head with handcuffs. Meow. Forehead with the handcuffs. Meow. Kick. Meow. Kick. Meow. Kick. Meow. Clubs to the back. Meow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, they killed that gimmick. They fight at the chicken feathers, which haven't been fucking cleaned up yet uh, because Jesus of TNA. Cr- fucking hell. They have three minutes to clean that up. Blow punches to a bloody Harris against the steps. The like goes. <laughs> I have nothing to say. And Wildcat, of course, Harris, Mike, you gotta wonder if he's gonna be able to get himself focused. The fucking wedgie that he gave Harris. Oh my Christ. <laughs> Bet up there. Throw into naked turnbuckle metal. Clothes line to ref Andy Thomas. And then he just shouts in Harris's face, ah! <laughs> Harris in this match, he's now choked. Rain teases us with a Shattered Dreams, but instead does a running stunner. Little, I kind of like it. It's a little fucking whoopsie stunner. It's terrible looking. I kind of liked it. <sighs> Punch with the handcuffs and chokes Wildcat with its chain. Earl gets in and DQs him in 450. Post-match, he cuffs Harris to the ropes, giving us a mild crucifix pose, maybe? Grabs his gimmick spike and drives the blunt end of the head into his crown. That's very kind of him not to use the sharp end, isn't it? Pointless. Literally. Hi-oh. 
and the babyface X Division wrestlers ward him off. Surely he could just batter them as well. Like, yeah. they're tiny. Like, he's, he's a mountain of a man. He's like, Mo, me, meow, Mo, me, meow. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Yeah, I loved it. What else can you say? It's fantastic fun. It really is. Everything about this guy is money. Like, he's a lazy, he's a, what is it? <laughs> he's a lazy. <laughs> <laughs> this gimmick is a license to print money. It's a license to print like Virgil dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as well as that, fond memories of us talking about him 10 years ago and enjoying his gimmick. And he actually does fine. He doesn't really fuck anything up. He sells the story and it was fast and effective. Obviously, this is not much of a match, but uh, it was a brutal beatdown. Like, it was bloody. It was kind of nasty. Everything it needed to be to get across this kind of madman character. Loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I don't care that this was Dustin Runnels' low point as a human, scrounging on the carpet looking for pills. Creatively, this is where it's at. Yes. In the WWF, we never got to see a dark version of Goldust. And in WCW, the 7 gimmick was scrapped instantly. So we actually get to see it in TNA. Give it 10 years, Goldust. You'll learn to appreciate the creative genius of the gimmick. And unblock me. And and everyone who's blocked on my behalf. (laughs) It wasn't a match. It was all about the debutante, Dustin Runnels. A coming out party for Black Rain, 10 on 10. By the way, we haven't mentioned his voice. It's really creepy. It's a, a pretty good, psychotic, crazy character. What was he talking like? It's like, <laughs> I'm going to you know, that's not at all. That's absolutely <laughs> it's, not. It's something along <laughs> yeah, the that, that, I'm uh, going to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare your diddle hole. <laughs> Match number seven, dream in inverted commas. (laughs) Because it's 2007 and not 1997. A tag match. The Steiners versus Team 3D. Didn't get to see this at Slammiversary because there was a life-threatening injury to Scott? Yeah, holy shit. He was having a match in Puerto Rico. He got kicked in the throat, which caused him to have a tracheal tear in his chest. So he was rushed into the hospital for emergency surgery, where they cut away his lat opened up his rib cage, went in through the back, deflated his lung, reattached his trachea, and sewed him back up. Holy fucking shit, that's surgical emergency. He would have died within hours. Like, Mm. Yeah, he was in a medically induced coma for a couple of days. Mm. Fucking terrifying. You can see the massive scar he has under his arm. They even work it into the match, which is pretty cool. Bubba Ray cuts a great fucking promo wanted where he's just like the state of that scar back in ECW that was nothing but a paper cut <laughs> yes you can only say that stuff when he's made a full recovery yes of course <laughs> did you like his Puerto Rican accent <laughs> Puerto Rican yeah that's that was mine like <laughs> <laughs> apparently Dr. Pico he's got Steiner he only have three hours to live What's their beef between Steiners and Team 3D? On Impact, Scotty cost Devon a chance to win the world title. I was like, come on, mate, you're not winning that. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, at last month's uh, pay per view, it was the Dudleys against Angle and Joe. The Steiners interfered and cost them their tag team titles. Which Joe just kept for himself? Yeah, yeah. Shouty 80s wrestler Rick Steiner says they're going old school with the old dog. Wait a minute, who's that Jap lad behind them? Who are you? Yeah, who the fuck is he? <laughs> uh-huh. Scotty calls him my partner here and doesn't name drop him. And later, Don West says who? Schwami? 
<laughs> Actually, All Japan Pro Wrestler, S-U-W-A-M-A, Swama. Swama. They'd actually lose their match the next night against Muta and Tadgers. Ah, well, this is the the match that was so much more important than this one that Scott is saying. Ah, oh, yeah, this is only a warm up match for my big match tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, thanks, thank thanks, you. Yeah. Steiner's out first. Forty six year old Rick doesn't move so well, hooting and jocking around the ring. He was like, rah, 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 rah. I was like, oh, lots shit. of chicken dancing. Going yes, on. that's how he walks now. He's also rocking the old amateur wrestler singlet. Yeah, in crush. Purple and orange. Nice. Jay, did you like Scott Steiner's vest? Bit of a waistcoat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird. He's wearing a t-shirt and then a waistcoat over. Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) So now we know the origin of that. (laughs) Dog-faced gremlin slams Devon and bites Bubba's dick. I'm watching Scotty to see how much he can wrestle and move around the ring. Bubba and Devon take big back body drops so Scotty doesn't have to move. It's like, eh, but it's okay. He runs the ropes and hits a double clothesline and follow up Bimmy to Jimmy overhead. So good stuff. Mm. Fucking Benoit crossface by Rick Steiner. Fuck off, mate. That's uncool. Seven weeks after the Benoit tragedy. Oh, oh this is 2007. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, Sean was using it. Joe as well. Joe. Like, everyone was using this fucking move. And it's all uncool. Yeah. Sensical rest holds. Boot into Scotty's lung scar. Pulling the arm against the ropes, separating it. And an abdominal stretch. Yeah, all good Can stuff. I say, working your recent surgical scar for heat. Mwah. Dog face gremlin in. Cleans house with a big back body drop to Bubba. Same to Devon. Single arm suplex to Brother Ray and again to Devon. Just big lads moving a lot of meat around yeah. the ring. Kick out of each other's big moves. Scotty with a breath rope overhead suplex. How did I only get it too? As does taking a doodly device. Bubba motions for the reverb, and crowd have none of it, chanting same old shit. First to the apron, and now on his way. Steiner recliner, but it's broken up. Gassed Rick dumps Bubba on his neck slash shoulder. It was bad. He was lucky. Time to call it. Set up Devon for a top rope bulldog. Hit it and get the one, two, three and the win in 11 minutes. I really enjoyed it. And I was surprised. I didn't expect to enjoy it. Really impressed with both the Steiners. I know you, you're saying Rick was a bit wobbly. Okay, he botched one move, but in general, not too shabby. It was good fun. A few nice spots and uh, well done, lads. They fucking pulled it off. It was okay. Rick look good throwing the guys around until he drew Bubba on his head big pop a pump broke out breath rope boomy to Jimmy uh, Frankensteiner the guys were over so uh, thumbs up I was shocked yes agreed so I watched this match twice whoa first time was just to watch the match and take notes second time was all eyes on Bubba I was on jocks watch yeah. how many times did Bubba on camera Pull up his jocks in this match. Two. I got three. Eight. Wow. Do you have any time splices there? What? Oh! <laughs> 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 yeah, baby. Backstage, Kurt goes to see Dr. Nash. He tells Kurt there are things more important than family. Like me, your doctor. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) And tells him to listen while baby cheeking him. And he just kind of shakes him while pushing him. Great. I thought it was amazing. He was like, oh, you can beat Joe. I have the tiger. I have the tiger. It's great. You can do it. I can do it. I have the tiger. 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 Why, Karen, why? <laughs> oh. 
In ring, Tanae starts hot-dogging and grandstanding about mainstream media coverage. Fans know who he's talking about and start booing immediately. <laughs> TNA were getting by by saying that, you know, if you're bored of the WWE, come watch us. We're something different. We're something fresh. We have our own identity. You fucking don't. You're the exact same. You crave when real TV just mentions you. And you fucking flaunt it about, just like you're throwing your dick around. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> 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 Stuck in the tree. <laughs> it's like it's fucking stupid. Like they're every bit as bad. He's bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's bad. Who's bad? It's a Pac Man joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, nice! Fans at ringside start making it rain with Monopoly money. Not quite Okada at Wrestle Kingdom 11 or uh, JBL at WrestleMania 21, but hey, it's something. Cornerback for the Tennessee Titans, Adam Pacman Jones, denotes himself as heel as he denies a handshake from Mike Tenay. Why would he deny Tenay a handshake, Steve? Because <laughs> he's a. Do it, the elf figure. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, geez, Pac-Man. He gives one sentence closed answers quietly. Hey, why'd you come to TNA? TNA is a trendsetter. Uh, I'm a trendsetter. That's it. Why professional wrestling, Pac-Man? As a kid, I always growing up loving wrestling, so I wanted to step in the ring one day. Okay. God bless TNA. Thank God, or truth theme hits. What's up? What's up? What's up? The Pac-Man Jones is coming in. What's up? What's up? Like, How long has he had this song that's for? That's amazing. He brought his TNA song with him to WWE. What's up? What's up? Truth says wrestling is a snake bit where it's who's going to get screwed first. That's quite accurate and, you know. It kind of is, yeah. He also drops some literal contractual truth, saying Pac-Man can't touch or be touched to deny any chance of getting injured, which is true. Fans rightly react, chanting, "He's a bitch!" Uh, he's a bitch! He's a bitch! He's a bitch! He's a bitch! Killing says he's at the front of the line to kick Pac-Man's ass and to watch himself. Pac-Man responds, like he says, he's a wrestling fan. He responds with the worst fake laugh in uh-huh. history. Jesus, Pac-Man, your laugh is cringe. Ha 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 ha. Awful. Ha 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 ha. I'll get you, Gadget. You know, whatever. Ha 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 ha. Lightning Rod Pac-Man says, come get some. And then Truth rushes the ring, but police have none of it and push Truth away. 25 grand, that cost. Oh. And so I'll tell you what happened here. Jarrett brought in the American footballer for some mainstream publicity. He was available as Jones was serving a one-year suspension at the time. The Tennessee Titans actually pulled a restraining order two days before the show, but after six hours of negotiations, agreed that Pac-Man can go on, but he just can't do anything physical. Jesus. What about those security guards? They were real. They were hired by the NFL. Because they were worried people might jump him. Because he was linked to a strip club shooting of night manager and ex-wrestler Tommy Urbanski. I'll tell you what happened. Okay, everything I say here is allegedly, Mm. by the way. Pac-Man and Nelly were making it rain in a strip club. When the dancers started collecting the money afterwards, he got furious and started battering the women. This incited a massive fracas with all of his crew. Yes. And the club manager got like 80 grand in a bag and a few watches and left, which was recovered by police later. So when that died down, one of Jones's mates returned with a gun and fired into the crowd, hitting Tommy Urbanski, leaving him paralysed from the waist down. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. What's more, Pac-Man's drug dealer was arrested. And it's like, I don't know him and I didn't know he was a drug dealer. <sighs> In the end, Pac-Man was ordered to pay $11.6 million to the injured parties back in 2012. He got off lightly. And did he go back to football? He did go to a different... Team? Team, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
what kayfabe reason did TNA have to have him there? Because they even admitted he couldn't be touched. I think their kayfabe reason is the same as the actual reason to get mentions in the in the real media to get the company name out there. Here you go, a little something for page one. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> to be fair, he is an incredible heel. I mean, I'm not saying he's doing anything to get that status, but he's just a fucking low life prick. Yeah. I, think, I hate this guy. I think yeah. a wrong type of heat, though. This is shame on the company for mm. having him, you know? Mm. What's more shameless? Pac Man Jones to get heat and media attention or <laughs> Jeff Jarrett selling gold? Which is more carny. Which is more Oh, Pac Man's worse. Yeah, Pac Man, like <laughs> having anything to do with him is way worse than uh, scamming people, you know? I can't true. believe you hate Pac Man so much. You really hate this guy, don't you? Scum. He's scum. Yeah. And his crew are scum. Yeah. Allegedly. You know? yeah. <laughs> I love that word. Your book ended the whole Pac-Man story. <laughs> it's time for the Doomsday Chamber of Blood. Tomko, AJ and Christian versus Sting, Abyss and Andrew Martin. Abyss is good now. After a failed tag team title shot with Christian, he had enough of being berated and Black Hole slammed Jim Mitchell and was attacked by the Christian Coalition for his trouble. He was outnumbered, but who should help him but the Enforcer, the Punisher, Andrew Martin. It's my boy, my bottom boy, Test. Abyss got to choose the match he wanted with Christian at Hard Justice. A six-man Doomsday Chamber of Blood. It's a cage match with barbed wire at the top so there's no escape. Also, you have to be bloodied up to be eligible to be pinned. Also, the winner gets to be number one contender to the TNA title. How about that? Christian recounts what I've just said and that he'll hold Abyss personally responsible if a drop of blood leaves AJ's body tonight. Styles, stupidly optimistic, says he won't bleed and triumphantly holds up a packet of band-aids. Yeah. I'm not bleeding tonight. <laughs> I love Christian Cage. I love his sneaky coward heel act. AJ was brilliant being the country doofus. Uh, Biss's character. <laughs> yeah. Even at this point in 2007, I think his character was a bit played out. <laughs> he went for 10 more years. <laughs> <laughs> Tomko is Tomko. You know, he's bland. He's a muscle guy. And uh, your boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. The size of him. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, he cuts one promo on the build. Sorry, Jay. No good. If it's only a nine on ten. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Boys, we're back test. on heat. Motley Crue's bodyguard test One, on two, stage test. doing some last test. minute sound check here. There test. he is. Test Andrew Martin from Ontario, Canada, trained by Bret Hart, Leo Burke, and Dory Funk Jr. Vince saw him and said, I'll have a bit of that, and snapped him up, debuting him as the bodyguard for Motley Crue on heat. He became the hired gun for the corporation, named Test. A rib on testosterone supplements. <laughs> he turned face by picking up a 2x4 and joining Mick Foley's ragtag stable called The Union, or its proper title, The Union of People You Oughta Respect, Son. <laughs> or Up Yours. <sighs> Russo's like, <laughs> <laughs> Up Yours, Shane! What? Becoming kayfabe romantically linked to Stephanie McMahon, he earned Shane's blessing by beating him at SummerSlam before H drugged her and Shotgun Wedding married her, kicking off the McMahon-Helmsley era. And Trips kicked him down to the mid-card. He saddled up with your boy, Albert, mm. and Trish Stratus to form TNA, TNA, which is fondly remembered but had no success. Well, now suspicious pair! But he managed to snag the hardcore title and later the European title and intercontinental title. Every so often, he'd get this kind of semi push, but then when it came time to actually, do you want to have him as a main eventer? Just no. Whoa. <laughs> he was never there. 
No, but you know, it's kind of weird. I reckon in this day and age, he'd be a fucking world champion. So these kind of semi-main event push, but he'd always kind of fall back to earth. He won the Invasion Battle Royal, getting immunity for a year. He had an awesome hoss battle as himself and Brock Lesnar knocked lumps out of each other at the 2002 King of the Ring. Before teaming up with Christian and Lance Storm as the Un-Americans, which were unfortunately fodder for American Badass Taker. During the brand extension, Tess was paired with his girlfriend and image consultant, Stacey Keebler, as a babyface. Kane had the Canaanites, Hulk had the Hulkamaniacs, and Tess had his testicles. testicles. One of the worst t-shirts ever made by WWE. I love my testicles! <laughs> do you have this t-shirt? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Tess original t-shirt, but not the uh, I love my testicles t-shirt. <sighs> Doing the bastard boyfriend gimmick and feuding with Scott Steiner, he was given the boot in 2004. They hired him back in 2006, more roidy than ever, for the relaunch of ECW, becoming a top heel and main eventing, helping main event December to dismember, until they went with Big Show instead. After failing a wellness test, how could it happen? Testosterone was let go. Thankfully, Dixie had a massive chubby for ex-WWE stars, so they snapped them right up. And away we go. There's a new enforcer in TNA. The Punisher. Andrew Martin. Actually, this spot here was meant for Rikishi. Get out. Junior Fatu, yeah, yeah. yeah. He came in, do you smell what the quiche is cooking? And he like doesn't know Robert Roode's name, <laughs> doesn't know the type of match they have. <laughs> and he was like, I want more money. Here's what we're offering. No, I'll just win for three weeks and leave. Jesus And that was Christ. it. Right. in a bit of junior. Please. Yeah. I forgot about his I role. did until just there. Yeah, the second he mentioned it, I was yeah. like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made the the right for the fight for your right. What's that Jabroni's name? Fight for the right. You are facing Robert Rude. Junior Fatu faces Rick Rude or or, or Robert, Robert Rude or whatever that Jabroni's name is. Heel Christian Coalition are out first. I like how they all come out the Christian theme. They are a fucking unit, and then the faces come out separately. Abyss with his. <laughs> <laughs> Farty arms. As Don West inadvertently dismisses his gimmicks by saying he's got tacks or glass or bolts or whatever. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Heels jump him so. My boy, Test! Oh my god, he roid runs to the ring. He is enormous <laughs> and can barely move. And he's still got his fucking Test jocks on. The tea with the, the sun like, and the moon. Sun and the moon, mm. yeah. Oh, God. Him and fucking Rhino can uh, <laughs> form a tag team. <laughs> <laughs> you cheap cunts. <laughs> a blackout. One, two, three. By the way, they're minutes, not seconds. <laughs> Why did it take so long with the blackouts? Oh. Sting is in the ring to clock Tonko with a chair. DW tells us that's opened him up so he's eligible to be pinned. Big press push slam to AJ by this. Huge schmoz inside and out of the ring. Stinger has none of the cage door into my face spot, but Tomko just repeats it and he's like, okay, and takes it. Tess does his best Undertaker impression with snake eyes followed by a big boot. Signature pump handle slam. Yeah, no <laughs> bombing though. And pin, but it's not valid because Christian hasn't bled. Cut backstage to Pac-Man selling. It's so lame. He sells like Dracula <laughs> with his arms crossed above his chest. Like. Play. <laughs> Doing his best zombie Linda impression yeah. here. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Shiver my mummy. <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck off. Keep that shit to between the matches. Yeah. The heels won't let Sting inside, and Christian completes a crazy carny manoeuvre of cutting Abyss's forehead with a shard of his glass. Yeah, and then his arm. What was that? He just... Oh. Abyss, he loves having his arms he's cut. E- What's the yeah. story? He's an even bigger carny. 
And then you see close up of Abyss's face and like the mask is stained with the blood. I thought it actually looked really cool. It looks great, but it's nasty. Mm. Does he not get new ones? Because how do you, what you, like, nothing gets blood out, do you know? I'm sure he's had a few masks because he had the kind of silver one and he had a black the, one the and he had Dalmatian. a brown one. Or the, <laughs> yeah. or the, did you remember that one? Did he not just get it scotch guarded or something, no? I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he's just a big knacker. (laughs) (laughs) Handyman Stinger decides he won't try the door again, but gets wire cutters to part the barbed wire atop the cage so he can climb in. Uh, Would you not just turn off the lights and appear in the ring? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, take ages. (laughs) Face jam to AJ and Stinger cleans house. Tonko with a lovely choke bomb to Abyss on a chair. AJ follows up with a frog splash, as does Christian. Super Abyss powers out at two and Christian Frogger jumps, selling it real well. Punisher, big boots Tomko, but the camera cuts right at impact, so it looks kind of shit. Right, that's it. Christian leaves AJ to the wolves, escaping the cage, and with Tomko still dazed, Styles has no chance against three big baby faces. Test throws AJ hard into the cage, presumably opening him up, and Abyss hits the black hole slam! Bag of ham! Under the glass, and we get the three. Abyss is the new number one contender in 1051. I don't think AJ was bleeding. West calls it that he was, but I don't think he was. He's got excellent clotting factors. <laughs> I thought this was an entertaining plunder match. Plenty of blood. No real memorable spots, though. No real story. It's just shit happening with six men in the ring. It was fine. But... Test. (laughs) (laughs) It was a tornado tag, but with everyone wrestling at the same time, it was just the big schmals. A bloody affair, a plunder match, but outside the standard abyss bag stuff, there isn't much going on spot wise. There were no real spots in the no. match, you know. Uh, but it had test, so ten on ten, you know. <laughs> That's it for test, by the way. That's his run. This is his first, last, and only TNA match. Wow, I thought he, I thought he was there for like two or three weeks. That's the kind of impression. <laughs> 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 he was there for two or three weeks. <laughs> Uh, He was fired in September over steroid concerns. Unbelievable. No. WWE and TNA were looking to keep the nose clean after the Benoit tragedy and the... Signature uh, pharmacy, was it? Yeah. It's not like he was fired from WWE a few months ago because of steroids. From then on, it was just indie dates, but all wasn't lost as he got to meet his number one boy, Jay <laughs> Hunter, and Steve Lucian as he went to American Wrestling Rampage. Salt Hill, Kunde Galyev. Kunde Nagalyev. Got off the tour bus to say hello after another wrestler spotted me in the test chair. And I was like, oh, yes, oh, mm. yes. And he, <laughs> very nice. That was, I appreciated that. His match was shit, by the way. Oh, oh my, my God. That was with the Sandman. The Sandman, yeah. Anyway, got to meet Test. I told him, Stephanie McMahon, Stacey Keebler, and Kelly Kelly. And he's like, <laughs> he just laughed. <laughs> awesome. You're the real champion, mate. Yes. Uh, sadly, he passed away before he turned 34 due to an opioid overdose. Still my number one boy, my bottom boy. Even got a spot as a nazy boxer in Tarantino's Grindhouse. Hmm. There are wrestlers out there who are horrible carny folk and Tess just seemed like a nice guy and we met him, he was nice and he was nice to us. That's really fucking sad. He was like, Tess t-shirt, you're the one. (laughs) (laughs) They spoke of the one sale. (laughs) That's eight matches down, one match left. It's time for your main event. All the marbles, it's time for your main event. What the fuck happened? (laughs) (laughs) All the belts converge on this matchup. Samoa Joe relieved Jay Lethal of the X Division title last month. 
he scored the pinfall wrestling tag champions Team 3D, opting to hold the tag titles himself. Kurt Angle has been TNA champion since May, having wormed his way into Christian and Sting's world title match which was set up at lockdown. You can see Kurt's actually got the IWGP title. Oh, it's so it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Oh my god. And the side plates, they actually etch in the name of every champion. So no shit booking, mate. Yeah. Mm. The title lineage is a bit more complicated. The IWGP International Wrestling Grand Prix Championship is the name of New Japan's world title. Brock was the champion, but was stripped when he missed the show thanks to travel issues. Co-founder Antonio Inoki left New Japan, creating his own federation, the IGF, declaring Brock Lesnar their champion, who still had the physical belt in his possession. Lesnar dropped this IGF title to Angle on their debut show just two weeks prior, and that's the belt you see here, Inoki's IGF world title. At the time, TNA had a working deal with New Japan, so getting the belt onto Angle really helped out. In the end, Inoki returned to New Japan, and in February 2008, they had a match to unify the two belts, the IGF world title and the New Japan world title, Kurt Angle dropping it to the king of strong style, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nice. Kurt's undergone a radical gimmick change here in TNA. What's what's going on here? It's great. He's just a completely delusional superstar heel. Thinks he's the greatest thing ever. Doesn't care about anything or anyone. Only his titles and being the greatest world champion in the world. And he is. <laughs> yes, oh, and he fucking is. When you're Mrs. Kurt Angle, you're supposed to look perfect. My kids know that too. And if they don't live up to my standards... To go right out the door. That's a to me. That's coming out of your allowance. Now pick it back up. Now at home, my wife never shuts up, so I'm sure it'll be easy for her to explain to you who I truly am. I am so sick of your world title, and I am so sick of your arrogance. This marriage is over. It's the Olympic hero, Kurt Angle, versus the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Angle with his new rap theme and fire pants. He's extremely dejected, barely picking up his world title. Conversely, Joe is confident, fired up, doing a special Samoan dance troupe entrance. Man, I really hope WWE do something like this for him. But do it their way, and, you know, not just two or three lads coming out going, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, WWE would get 50 people. Like, do you remember Brodus Clay's entrance with all the grandmothers? Somebody call for me. <laughs> me, me like that. <laughs> Angle does a fantastic job looking completely vacant, just absent minded, thinking about his wife, Karen, and his impending divorce. Um, he does it these days too, but uh, that's from all the drugs. <laughs> Kick off! Joe overpowers Kurt, sending him to the outside, as Karen and her guest, let's call him Justin, take their seats. Saved by the bell level racy as they barely kiss and the commentators go, oh boy. Yeah. V1 special, the Americana. Oh yeah. Very fitting for the Olympic gold medalist and American hero. The storyline here is Kurt's preoccupied looking at Karen and keeps losing his advantage because of it. All right, enough of that. Straps down. Time to take this more seriously. Actually, no. Sunset flip and... And he pulls a big Triple H getting his arse out. Ah, screw it. Outside the ring, Kurt confronts Karen, getting a face full of bubbly for his troubles. Angle hits a German suplex, then another, but Joe reverses a third and hits one of his own. It's a whopper one of Kurt doing a flip. Awesome. Yes. Karen and Boy Toy do a wedding champagne toast. And I hate that we're paying attention to them and that's the storyline. So I'm trying to look at Joe versus Angle, you know? Yeah. Slap, slap, slap. And Joe hits his corner urinagi. Reversal machines. Escape out of the muscle buster and roll into the ankle lock. Reverse out and into the coquina clutch. Drop down and return to the ankle lock. Turn, push off, and pin Kurt, but it's only a two. Angle responds with an Olympic slam. Crowd are so into it with Let's Go Angle, Let's Go Joe. Pat 
Lightning submission hold in play, though. The other person ready for it, able to counter, as you can see, Angle now. Angle scarpers up to the turnbuckle to meet Joe and delivers a big overhead suplex. Uh, bimmy to bimmy. Beautiful moonsault, but Angle, as always, misses. Question. Does he always miss his moonsault because he once broke fucking uh, Holly's arm with it? I think it's safer if you're not going to hit a person. Like, mm. you're just landing on a mat. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Bam! Muscle buster. One, two, kick out. Fuck! Kakina clutch and body scissors. But Kurt bites his way out. Yes! That's so awesome. Ankle lock. Pull reversal and back into the Kikina clutch. Time stands still, seeing if Angle will tap or knock out. But it's option three. His foot makes the ropes. Ref takes a bump and the third Kikina clutch gets a tap, but that's no good. So why does Joe let go then? Keep on yeah. the, the, the hold until the ref wakes up? Yeah, yeah. Karen Angle makes her way to ringside and offers a chair to Joe. But at the last moment... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Swerve. Karen pulls it away. Kurt gets the chair instead and smashes Joe in the head, getting the one, two, three, the win, and an 1834, all the gold. It's your X Division tag team, IGF, TNA world champion, Kurt Angle. I quite like this idea of all the gold on the line because it makes these two lads look amazing. All the championships! Kurt Angle celebrates with Karen and just incredible lad. <laughs> the trademark, that trademark, what is he? Mark Predka, John Cena's first cousin. Uh, what do you think of this match? Really good main event. The first couple of minutes were not so much based on what's going on in the ring and it's between Kurt and Karen and they're telling us a story. They're making movies, as uh, Vince likes to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... What a knob. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it built in pace, it built in intensity, told a good story and had a whopper last couple of uh, minutes. The finish wasn't clean, but I thought it was worth it because it kind of moved everything forward with the whole Kurt and Karen thing, turning them both super heel. So uh, two big gorilla thumbs up here. Yeah, I, I was. it's awesome. With Joe, I think this is possibly the time to pull the trigger. Yeah, they, they waited too fucking mm, long. Mm. Yeah, exactly. He should have won this match. This yeah. is a huge honour and Kurt Angle is already a highly decorated wrestler. Give this to Joe. Mm. Yeah. You know? mm. Although it does fit in with Angle's new Hollywood star gimmick that he would have all the belts. You know? yeah. It doesn't really work if he's lost the belts. That's the end of the gimmick. You know? It's true. Mm. Okay, let's take it to the aftermath. Welcome to the aftermath. Uh, so, gearing up for our final chapter, Bound for Glory. How was TNA doing? Amazing. Don't let any facts say otherwise. <laughs> the wrestling world was turned upside down seven weeks ago when the Benoit tragedy happened. A horrific milestone in wrestling. WWE and TNA started baseline testing their talent. Over one third of WWE's talent failed for anabolic steroids and a quarter of TNA's. Wow. However, TNA had no repercussions for failure and security was so lax you could get someone else to take it. Jarrett, Russo and Mantel were still heading creative, but they've added Tene, Abyss and JB into the mix. Abyss? Mm. So that's why he's always in featured feuds. Motherfucker. Mm. Like, I've literally given you my blood for this <laughs> company. Every match. Good news. TNA Impact is going to two hours in October. Bad news. They keep hiring ex WWF talent <laughs> and pushing them harder than their own. So morale was in the shitter. They did talk with Goldberg coming in, who had a show called Bull Run on Spike TV, who also show TNA Impact, but fell through when the show was cancelled. And TNA's offer by themselves to Goldberg was just insulting. Plus, Goldberg hated Russo, and so his asking figure would be quite high. They wanted Jericho, too. Y2J actually teased signing with TNA. I remember this. He'd put, like, the Impact logo on his website and that kind of thing. 
But turns out he was just using TNA to leverage him against WWE to get the dollar figure he wanted. Awesome. And it worked a charm. Jerry Lynn, Martyr, and the Bashams, and Spike Dudley were all fired after the show. Others discussed leaving, but not all doom and gloom. You never guess who they signed in August 2007. Me! <laughs> <laughs> OC's boy, Matt Morgan. The blueprint. Mm. The DNA of TNA. He was. He was like, he had a couple of really good years and it looked like it was all going well. And then it just Whoa. petered out. What's more, Jim Mitchell prophesied his son would be coming to settle a vicious... Oh my God. <laughs> 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 uh, little uh, Junior, like. Junior Macias. Junior Macias, like. <laughs> And not only that, his other, his mate with him. Relic. Yeah. Oh my God, killer spelled backwards. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, he only have to say that once today. And we got it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is his gimmick. <laughs> Informing you of his yeah. one trivia note. Like. Kimmick spelled backwards. Like. <laughs> uh, so what did you think of Hard Justice? Um, overall, well worth watching. An enjoyable pay-per-view couple of good to really good matches uh, the main event the x division as always a couple of uh, fun brawls um the doomsday chamber of blood storm rhino and um even though it wasn't a brawl steiners versus 3d was way above expectations and of course pac-man jones <laughs> and uh meow 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 so it's a stacked card actually there's a lot to be said for this card. Big recommendation from me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I thought this was a really fun show to watch. Very easy to actually sit through. Did it in two goes. Loved the six-man opener. Dutt just really shone in this match. He was spectacular. TNA just upping everything, you know? Like, they're actually beginning to do good builds and promo packages and get the match over, which is awesome. The Kaz match was a bit shit, although Kaz looked good. Rhino match was better than it had any reason to be. LAX versus VKM was bollocks. Special mention for Kip's gear. <laughs> what the fuck, mate? Steiners versus Team 3D was better than I thought it was going to be. I was dreading it. Pac-Man Jones can go fuck himself. Uh, of course, meow, meow, meow was glorious. Obviously, they're grooming him for a main event run. Black Rain. <laughs> I thought it was an entertaining, if messy, six-man cage match. The booking was a bit silly, but I uh, have it written here. Jesus Christ, look at Test. Just look at him. He's great, isn't <laughs> Just he? look at him. <laughs> uh, and I thought the main event was awesome. Two fucking super workers uh, working a really good match. Told a very good story. I thought the swerve was a bit obvious. I saw it coming a mile away, but, you know, it worked. So, thumbs up. I'd recommend the show. Cool. Yeah. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. As with all these TNA shows, they're just great. A lot of fun, a lot of nostalgic fun, and the wrestling as well, especially from the X Division. She's getting to see the type of wrestling we don't get to see anymore. Yeah. It's awesome. It's difficult because we went to see Last Rites and then Blindfold, Electrified Cage, Camto, like a lot of bollocks, you know. And this pay per view had only. One bollock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a singular bollock. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it was a very enjoyable watch. Please spend more money on bad gimmicks, if you can, you know? No, no. Please spend less money <laughs> on bad gimmicks. <laughs> more Black Rain, yeah. I think. Uh, 25 grand on uh, Pac-Man Jones, and we'll see you in hell, Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one major time for The Wrestling Is... Awesome segments. Awesome. Got a nice little uh, acting career started. Uh. Money, security. Who we'll drank all the damn Gatorade? Damn it! And apparently steroids. Hi. Hey, babe. Boom, 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 boom. Shoot you 
rap down off of your feet. Bang, 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 bang. Boom, 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 boom. You know what, AR? You are the best looking guy on your team, no kidding. You know, Paul, in the midst of all this, for you to say something like that, it's... <laughs> oh, God, you're not hurt, are you? Jesus, you sound like my mother. Listen, if you want to cry, you go ahead and cry. I'll cry with you. What the hell's wrong with you? Stop acting like a damn cheerleader. Sportsmanship, try it. Shut up. So that does it for this week, folks. TNA Part 3 is on the books. In the book. There it is, say. Next time, it's a three part. 16 man reverse over the top singles battle royal. Oh my god. Not one battle royal, but a second one. A 10 woman battle royal. Tables, monsters, balls, and Pac Man, or possibly Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's TNA's WrestleMania Bound for Glory 2007. And you can catch all of our episodes. Fuck! Free of charge and an IMAX flavored 4 to 3 full screen at oswreview.com. Or you can head over to Nagar You and catch some exclusive podcasts <laughs> and videos. <laughs> Such as our um, SummerSlam 93 review that we did live in Orlando. It was awesome. And um, Alien. Yes, our film reveal. So it's a goodbye from Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, and we will take a beat and myself Jay Hunter and remember a winner is you <laughs> <laughs>